Hey everybody, welcome once again to our weekly ecosystem office hours. I'm your host Jinx, and as always, we are joined by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Uh, I want to start things off with uh, Zach here. Any uh, PNF announcements for the week you'd like to put out there? Uh, we have a couple things. So since last week, obviously we had the heavily debated uh, vote that has passed. So I want to just do a quick thank you to everybody here who weighed in on that, for everybody who voted. Um, I feel like we got to the to the root of a lot of things that needed to kind of be said and like unpacked. And um, I'm working with PNF this week to figure out some of our better like comm strategies and making sure that we're getting more clear information across. So I, I really do want to do a big shout out and thank you to everybody from last week. Um, what else? So uh, Ads just put up a proposal in the forums just saying that she's going to be working with a PR agency. That was one of the things that was brought up last week. So she just wanted to make it super clear on why this time is different and good spend. Um, so please go hop over the forum if you want to learn more about that. Um, what else? I think that's it. We've got a builder's call tomorrow, um, same time as this call. And uh, I think that's it. I, for anybody who doesn't actually, for anybody who doesn't know, Mateo has offboarded, um, so he's no longer part of the foundation. Uh, and Shane has stepped in uh, to work with the protocol team, uh, Olshansky and his team, to uh, fill some of what Shane was doing. And there's also a post in the forum about uh, what that entails. So, yeah, I think that's it for us for this week. Oh, one more. All sockets um, this month have been evaluated and posted and made. We've closed a couple of them down. Um, and we have one or two new ones opening, but I do want to encourage anybody here, um, if you are seeing sockets and finding them valuable, want to open your own socket um, or weigh in on somebody else's, uh, please feel free to do that. And I just want to also note on my side that this month we're going to uh, find a system for evaluating impact. And so uh, I think we'll be using a tool that requires everybody to answer like a, a few simple questions and then we can rate it. But um, if people have seen other good systems for impact evaluation, you know, Optimism does it for their retro PGF rounds. Um, yeah, send them my way. Just interested to see what the community has used and what they like. And have you looked at how uh, MakerDAO does their thing? Now send me a link. Or I'll see if I can find some documentation. They've got a pretty good structure of, um, I think they call them, um, Dude, now I can't remember. Basically, they have a, a bunch of little sort of dedicated subcommittees around specific uh, mm. topics or specific initiatives. And then each cycle, whatever the cycle is, um, that subcommittee sort of has to justify its existence to be funded for the next cycle. It's interesting. Yeah, we did discuss doing some sort of committee that is required to weigh in on the sockets. Um, I, I haven't explored that much. I think it's a good idea, but then like, if you're part of the committee and there's five of you, like what kind of, do you, are you required to have compensation? What do you get out of being on the committee? Is it like a prestige thing? So I think it's just a system that needs to be figured out a little bit more, but I, I am very open to having, um, whether we call it a board or, or a committee, whatever it is that weighs in on the sockets, both opening and closing them. Um, so if people are interested in working through that with me. Again, DMs are open. Or, and I have some thoughts down down that line, but we'll get in them a, a little bit later in the call. Um, cool. For now, uh, Gabby, Fred, any uh, important PNF updates that need to get out there? Um, just real quick, uh, we launched Celestia Archival earlier this week. We're uh, pretty excited about it, and uh, we'd just like to give a shout out to Ian and Crypto Node Tools for being the bootstrapper. So thank you. Excellent. Well done, y'all. Appreciate the bootstrapping as always. Well, shoot, looks like Ian's not even here, but hey, if you're listening to the recording, good for you. Okay, well, if that's it on that side, uh, I do want to mention uh, one thing which may be uh, somewhat of a change in structure. Zach and I are still kind of talking through it. Um, we have in the past uh, uh, found some value here in discussing governance type things. Um, and so uh, we've talked about 
you know, bringing some of the content that's currently in other calls into this call and or specifically um, featuring governance talks anytime a major proposal comes up in front of the uh, in front of the DAO. Um, so it's, I, we've done this, you know, informally in the past, um, but it's something that we're talking about actually formalizing and making a, a regular recurring agenda item. So and not that we have much of an agenda, but, you know, a topic for discussion, as it were. Um, so if anybody has any thoughts about that, feel free to uh, uh, chime in or give some feedback. And I'll take a second here uh, and see if there are any questions or thoughts on any of the preceding mentioned items. Yeah, Jinx, I, I think I said this last week, but I, I really do think that having this, whenever we have a proposal up, having um, a discussion on the proposal in this call, which is it feels like less of a PNF format and more open um, would be a really good idea to get and collect feedback from everybody to see if proposals need to be fleshed out more or updated um, or if they're just misunderstood, which I think was part of the problem last um, proposal. Yeah, it was interesting uh, last time that, you know, we, we were looking at, and I outlined that in one of my comments that there were two different responses there, right? One of them was, is Ben qualified to be a director versus the other, you know, where I was sitting is is the director role being filled with the appropriate level of of uh skill and obviously we came to a point where um you know it was understood that we can and will be increasing the number of directors to account for those other things so it wasn't fit somebody in a hole and we're done as much as it was setting up somebody else who's skilled in this position to to serve in that way uh, and, I, and I do think it's a good idea to have some of these conversations in real time because it does allow for um you know, putting aside any misunderstandings, helping to clarify the position of the proposer, et cetera. Um, so, you know, that's, to me, that's that's a worthwhile use of our time for sure. I know we stayed away from governance stuff for a while on these calls, but that's because it was mostly node runner focused. Uh, at this point, I think there's hardly anybody on these calls who needs help from a technical perspective, which is how these calls started out uh, as initially. Uh, is Blades on here? Do we have any? No? Okay, well, um, if they do ever choose to join from uh, Nodis, happy to get any announcements and updates from them as well. Uh, okay, so wanted to get a little bit into uh, a governance topic that I've chewed on for a few years now um and and get some feedback from y'all originally the idea that i had been that i wrote a white paper about was more complicated uh but i want to reissue that white paper after some thought and some conversation and and really kind of cut it down to the bone of what i think the core purpose of it is i think committees are an interesting idea and it's something that we could explore but it's really separate from i think what my core desire is which is to resolve something that that has plagued us endlessly um the idea that the dow moves slowly and that uh you know that the debates are uh, uh maybe less than productive sometimes contentious uh, i've certainly seen uh, anytime someone disagrees with me in a position in the debates they can get stupid you know it, it's I, I don't think any of that is useful uh, but most importantly we've we've talked about a lot of sort of like organizational ways to address uh declining participation and or um you know sort of the various weights of votes depending on the kind of participant in the system i've seen a lot of this with the uh the creds system that's coming up and and how that's being proposed and how people are trying to figure out and chew on weights um i am of the opinion that we are probably better off as a dao or that perhaps the easiest solution to some of these problems as a dao is moving into something that is more like a trustee model of representation. Uh, and I think that that is valuable for a couple of reasons. Uh, and, and to be clear, a trustee model of representation is that the DAO itself is electing representatives who work in a committee type fashion to vote on the specifics of various proposals. Uh, and I think that this is a good idea for two reasons. One, it streamlines the hell out of the voting process. Uh, it doesn't require a month and a half every time something major comes up. 
we still hold the same conversations, we still have the same debates, um, but the actual voting process should be able to be knocked out extremely quickly. Uh, and the representatives themselves can weigh in with a, a position and or, you know, represent their constituents, so to speak. Um, two, I think that there is a value to expertise that our current system doesn't really um, effectively capture, and that I think some of these proposed ideas, like weighted voting based on participant type and things along that line, um, are are working to address. But I just don't know if 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 there is a a set method or or rule set that will make that super useful. And I know it may sound a little bit elitist, but you know I, I don't necessarily think that. Um, you know, uh, uh, a retail cashier's input on, uh, you know, economic structure should carry as much weight as somebody who has a master's in economics with a focus on blockchain, for instance. Um, you know, I, I, I do appreciate everyone in the community's input, um, but I think we lose out sometimes by not, you know, elevating some of the voices that are potentially more qualified opinions uh, around some of these proposals. Um, so this is something that I've been, you know, chewing on for around two years. I'm thinking something along the lines of like a popular vote, you know, call it top seven people by vote who were nominated. It's open to anybody in the DAO who currently holds a vote to, you know, run for office, so to speak. Um, and then, uh, very few um, proposals would actually require a full referendum. Uh, we'd probably need to clarify what things were actually full DAO votes versus what things are simply uh, uh, DAO representative votes. Um, but that's the rough idea. I wanted to put that out there and kind of get people's feel on it and, and uh, you know, feedback or such as, as uh, necessary. I see Derek and Zach are both typing. Yeah, absolutely, Zach. Feel free. I'm going to let the floor sit and have other people weigh in. Um, I'm obviously a little bit biased because I've been closer to the cred system that we're working on right now. And I think there's um, a couple of things we can talk through as well that are related to this. Philosopher kings for certain kinds of votes. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, I don't I don't know if we call that a philosopher king, really, uh, as much as, you know, are, are we putting uh, representatives in place that that bring that appropriate uh, uh, skill set and such to the table? Um, you know, it's they wouldn't be kings because they could be voted out as easily as they can be voted in. Recalls and all that are a normal part of representative elections. Hey, Jinx. Um, this, yeah, the, so yeah, there's a good, good few things to unpack with this. Um, I actually think there's a huge amount of merit um, in what you're saying in terms of, I guess, the two dimensions for me are actually deepening the representation of the right levels of expertise in the right areas. I think that's a, a, a I mean, in, a, in the, an ideal governance system, that's absolutely what you want. Um, and I guess thinking that through, I guess the challenge is the mechanisms to achieve this, right? Because also, as you've seen in governments all around the world, technocracies typically can be very good on the technical elements, but actually really miss out on the social political elements. And so often you really do need the full perspective. And I guess... Yeah, we, we we don't have to debate the actual mechanics for for appointing the right people, right? Because they will tend to be the necessarily the most popular, but not necessarily the most actual competent. So often you have the technocracy running in the civil service behind the scenes, um, and that obviously, as we see with governments, isn't always done right. So I, I guess um, I do think, and actually, I guess stepping back again, right? The new creds model is actually looking to over time we can actually get much more granular by understanding. What, how you've built up your voting power. Okay, 80% of your voting power is by being a gateway operator or by being a node operator. Maybe you should be weighing in more on certain certain questions. And similarly, on the builder side, you know, you've been submitting some major 
PRs to the to the code. You've been doing, you know, you've been getting kind of major thumbs up on different areas. You've been super active. You can think about that. So I, th I think it's all really interesting. I guess I think where it comes to life for me, and I think this question and what you're asking about should really be brought up in. I think there's going to be future kind of town hall types of discussions around creds to yep. really bring this to life. And I think this will be interesting to kind of talk about problems we've had in the past where this could have helped and just really tie it to those areas. And I guess straight away, I think there are actually a couple of areas where something like this, as we bed in the new system, this could work because actually to stay really flexible and dynamic, actually P and F will be given essentially um, the authority half the DAO, just like it has right now to add new data sources, add new blockchains, so new credentials. So how you add new builder credentials, how you add new citizen credentials, these kind of things. But actually, you can see how that would actually move to a community-led kind of committee that maybe rotates every six, nine, 12 months. There's different things like this where this is kind of the immediate stepping stone. We want to just launch this. Um, and you know, walk through everyone through the, pr the the process, get everyone to really understand the system, how it works, and then I think for sure, I think ideally we make PNF as redundant as possible when it comes to managing as much of this as possible. So yeah, so I'll, I'll pause there. Um, so basically, what I've said is, I generally agree about getting the right people in the right areas. I guess where I hesitate is we've actually done, we've actually resolved most of these issues with the Era framework because we aligned on what we think believe are the most important areas and we're directing a huge portion of the DAO's funds towards those areas and we have the bottom up mechanisms through quick grants or sockets mm -hmm. and the RFPs which actually need to be opened up more and I think that's going to be the launch of new ideas program so people can say hey we need to run kind of some kind of RFP process for this kind of area that we really care about and then we have the top down approach where we identify in tandem with community leaders and uh, PNF and everyone else saying we're going to invest in, you know, uh, audits for the protocol kind of an upgrade and so on and so forth. So that kind of provides a neat combination of there's one vote that actually tackles multiple funding streams and then there's transparency over time. And actually, I think because of that, we've actually sucked up or avoided most of the data. I actually think that the debate around Ben's appointment last week was the first time we've actually had this big kind of um, debate in the, in the in the in the forum like this and that actually generally isn't so healthy so I, I generally agree with you um there should be a lot more participation a lot more involvement and generally we want to avoid kind of what is apparently seem to be kind of zero-sum debates on matters when we should all be aligned on i guess what really matters but yeah sorry i've said quite a lot but um no worries there I want to address uh, uh, essentially two points that were brought up in the sidebar uh, chat as well. Um, and I'm going to start with uh, the one that I think is is a little easier to to unpack right away. Uh, I, from Derek, I take stronger abridge with the corollary, structurally disempowering everyone else's voices in certain contexts. First of all, I disagree entirely that this is disempowering everyone else's voices. A representative system is specifically and explicitly using everyone else's voices to feed their representative their position, and the representative is empowered to act on behalf of the constituency according to the voices within that constituency. Um, and, and that's like a, a, a fundamental part of this process, like in the vast majority of governmental systems. And what's more, systems like creds where certain voices are already being weighted differently, depending on the type of cred citizen that they are, this is already coming. So essentially we're talking about a done deal in certain voices carry more weight. The question is, how is that actually administered? Um, but second, um, I'm actually kind of surprised to see Fred say strong disagree with appeal to expertise, given that his expertise means I would trust his opinion on infrastructure questions more than I would trust that retail cashier. It's it's silly to me to think otherwise. Um, but uh, it, the, the greater point that's being made there in regards to, for example, as Derek says, I trust the voting and deciding voters to realize for themselves. 
Um, and also experts are very good, often good at things on paper. However, they don't live or operate in the real world. I mean, honestly, that's silly. You're an expert, Fred, and you live and operate in the real world. Zatar says experts can express their views, thereby see debate and impact voters' views. I would argue that a lack of expertise in a number of these proposals has led to some very unsatisfactory outcomes. I won't put Ben Van on the spot, but he absolutely called out that the vast majority of voters did not understand and the mechanism by which stake weighting worked. And he is right. And his voice should have been elevated in that conversation. And I think that that stake weighting proposal wouldn't have passed if that expertise was actually elevated and centered. Um, the, this expectation that the community at large will listen to expert input has been proven wrong literally countless times in the last three years. Just to quickly I, uh... jump in. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, no, go for it, Jeremy. Yeah, I, I guess um, two kind of challenges about this, because these are all good points. Um, the bigger, the more important decision for the community, the more voices we need um, in, involved in that decision. So I think any, um, the more minor, I guess, like updating some credentials for builders, you can see a committee of certain kind of group of representative experts managing that. Updating our constitution, our whole system, major protocol upgrades, um, that needs the broadest class of involvement, in my opinion. Um, so that, that's kind of my mental model for this. The more important it is, the more voices and the less you want to limit uh, representation. Secondly, I think the best thing and the most exciting thing about the new cred system is that it's going to bring in a hell of a lot of new voices. Um, we have amazing stakeholders and talented people in our community who don't have a vote yet. Um, the new system is going to be automated, dynamic, and much easier to get a vote. And we're going to really expand the franchise. So I, I expect, and that's going to, I think, going to make more of these talented people get more involved because they'll feel like they have a voice. So I guess that's all I'll kind of add to that debate is the new system will bring in more talented people who will actually have a direct impact on the new vote. But to be clear, we, we do have multiple classes of citizen voters within the cred system, yes? So to be really clear, everyone needs to be a citizen. That means you you align with our values and understand our essentially our technology or what POC is about to get a vote. And that will have some voting power, but at scale, that will be the smallest amount of voting power on an individual basis. And right. then you will boost your voting power, yes, by being a builder, which is includes technical building but also community participation and involvement and really that means you're adding impact and then the second side is yes you are using pocket in a productive way so that will be split between um gateway operators staking pocket to access relays and node operators obviously providing the service um to end users and of course we're, we have a bucket for liquidity providers because that is actually very helpful um that will be a smaller portion obviously but um, that will also be very helpful and uh, necessary post post the Shannon upgrade. And these are all, I guess, productive uses of Pocket. So we're not just having a plutocratic system, but those who are productively using Pocket should be represented. So yeah, so that's that's the kind of point. The people with who are, and the idea is that we're then enfranchising as many different people who are providing impact in different ways into the system. But to go back to Derek's point about philosopher kings, essentially what we're doing is putting in a landowner system. Yeah, my so so a little context here. I've talked with Jinx a number of times about more of a representative uh, governance model, and I've uh, because yeah, there 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 have been holes in what it felt like were uh, you know misaligned um, proposals that were able to get through simply because they had popular opinion, even though. They didn't have, uh, even though there was, they were lacking on some other merits. Uh, and so I've, I've actually talked to Jinx about this before in the past. And, uh, you know, even Jack, too, I've kind of suggested this, um, that a, represent, a representative model, you know, would have value. Uh, I am stepping back that thought a little bit. Um, and uh, and and I'm actually appreciate that Jinx brought up uh, stake weighting because that's that's actually a a good example. Um, stake weighting, I 
I, I believe that the reason that went through was mainly because the quote professionals all got behind it. Like the uh, key, you know, key players in the ecosystem got behind it. And even if we had a representative model, it still would have passed. Um, even if there was, because uh, I was actually a dissenting opinion and I was actually on, uh, you know, calls with folks talking about, you know, is this the right way to go? I was suggesting, no, that was not the right way to go. And I had my alternative proposal up there, which was uh, just upping the minimum. Uh, but the those that had the most influence and at the time there wasn't good power divide within pocket. And so those that held the influence uh, wanted, you know, thought that weighted stake was was the best way to go. So that would have passed regardless of what government structure we had, because those who would have held that representative role at the time still would have passed it. Um, Depending now, on who those people were, I, I, just to clarify, because you and Ben Van and Tracy were all speaking out against this. So I think it really heavily depends on who those representatives were. But again, you know, how many votes were there? It, okay, that's three where, where there have been, you know, uh five other you know votes as well you know where there have been like eight votes you know so that's that's where uh yeah i all, all i'm saying is because the majority of honestly the biggest voices in the ecosystem at the time were for it uh it you know it obviously passed um now uh, a counter example of this was good vibes where everyone in the ecosystem was for it uh, and it was expected to go to vote that week. Um, but I did a bunch of research, realized that it would actually crash our economy uh, and, you know, had to uh, produce this whole kind of like large report on it. Uh, and, you know, as kind of just it and ultimately it was the uh, doing that conversation in public is what uh what changed the course of that um, that vote? So that's where I think there is a challenge, though. Once you have once you have smaller groups of people, um, communication does get smaller as well, because what will most likely happen is a lot of the communication will happen between the voters, like the 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 representatives, um, kind of like how it is in you know to be honest, uh, the U.S. Congress today. Most of the communication backroom, who's going to vote, where is all happening outside of the public eye. And then we essentially just get to see the results. Mm -hmm. So because of kind of how I've seen over the past couple of years learning from the Dow model, I would be hesitant to have that because where I draw the difference is stake waiting. I had a lot of I had a lot of DM or a lot of uh, actual conversations. Uh, kind of like DM, I guess you could call them backroom, you know, conversations with people of influence trying to, you know, reason that this would actually be bad. While good vibes, everything was happening in the open. Uh, and so because of that, it allowed the best ideas to to kind of rise to the top. I don't know how you go to a representative fashion without creating uh, actually less information for folks. Um, that's that's what I don't know how you do that because I, I I'm I'm starting to believe that that's just what naturally happens every single time, uh, and so I will say this about the uh, uh, you know part of the reason that our voting has had issues because it has had issues um, communication has been lacking obviously which is why you know if there's not good communication that uh, activates the the voter base to make the best decisions that's where it's better to maybe have a representative who can understand things uh, on a deeper level because the average person, you know, you mentioned the cashier, wouldn't have the same level of technical understanding. However, with good communication, they might not understand all the technicals, but they understand the uh, ramification of the vote or, you know, the concept of the vote. Um, and so I am hopeful with like something like observers, they could start actually creating that uh, some of that communication. I think between uh, observers and then the cred system, which does start giving more voting power to those involved, 
um i think that that's that that starts to give those with the most expertise more power and more vote which is great and then the observers can possibly kind of bridge some of this communication uh lacking that's happening inside of the uh that that that's happened before with proposals in the past so i think some of the reasons to have a representative government you know more of a representative model um might be partially addressed with with kind of where we're going right now as a DAO. Um, but the areas I don't know how would how they would be addressed would be the natural uh, lack uh, or the natural back channeling among the representatives uh, where I believe that's probably where most of the discussions will be um, because it's in their best interest. So a lot of times it's in their best interest not to be super public about everything uh, because they're they're on the line for it, right? Like when I was being public about good vibes, uh, you know, there wasn't like a position that was on the line if I, if I you know, rocked the boat or anything. Uh, I could just be honest. And if I'm wrong, okay, I'm wrong, but that doesn't affect any kind of position, right? So uh, anyway, so I've, I've been talking for a little while, but those... I don't know how you prevent the back channeling and actually less information getting out to folks with something like a representative model. And that's what I've seen. You never prevent the back channeling, no matter what kind of system that it is. Uh, back channeling has been part of every single proposal that has ever passed or failed in the DAO since the inception of the DAO. That's just a fact, period. Um, I'm not talking about taking debates offline. Debates would still incur in public. And uh, obviously, uh, all members of the community, whether they have a DAO vote or not, would continue to be able to participate in debates just like they do now. Um, none of that changes. Uh, true. Back channeling does happen. It's part of the, you know, it's, it's part of any system. So you're you're completely right there. Um, I think what what's different now is there's not positions that are uh, that are literally incentivized to back channel. Um, back channeling now kind of happens organically, almost out of human nature. Versus, I I think a representative uh, system actually incentivizes more back channeling. Um, so that's that's where the difference is. Where it's either happening out of nature, or uh, it's happening out of incentivization. And I I I'm not sure how you present prevent the really a lot less or more votes uh, being being controlled by uh, very because because even back channeling now it has to be quite widespread. Like even this past you know vote, yes, there was I you know I I had communications and talks with you know different people because uh you know it's just the nature of things people are talking right so people were always talking but it's not super focused like you have to talk to a lot of people um and you know there's no perfect way to prevent factioning there's no perfect way to prevent back channeling it's just um right now it just happens naturally because it's just part of any human social structure however in a representative model uh, it's actually almost incentivized. So that's where I, I think an open recall model would would disincentivize that pretty aggressively from uh, uh, um, the the uh, in, in that you're answerable to your constituents. You know, like that's to me. I think that that's a fairly elegant solution. But that uh, being here, said, other thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Here, here, here's then kind of where I, I. I go with this. Like, if 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 communications are open, right? Um, and so, say I'm I'm a small fry. Okay, say I don't have one of these positions of a representative government, right? And I don't believe someone is doing something right inside of uh, you know this representative model. Well, now I have to speak out against that person, right? I. It's not about me speaking out directly about like a proposal. I have to now speak out against that person. And that person is a person of influence that is literally given uh, the voting power. And so on a social level, I would be hindering my own ability to get into the 
you know, really move up in the Dow potentially. Uh, I'd be hindering my ability maybe get, you know, certain benefits like grants or things like that because I have to go against an individual. Right now, how our system is, is we we don't really have to go against individuals. Like it really is a, we, we have, we, we go against, um, uh, other than really the uh, uh, voted in positions, which, you know, is is the, uh, uh, like PNF, is really the only time we have to go, um, you know, where we have to specifically vote on an individual. But I, I just, you know, that that's where my fear is, is it would, you know, if if this representative form gets so strong and it is so interconnected, um, going out against them, how do you prevent that? Uh, how do you prevent that kind of control from preventing folks from, you know, really having freedom to step stand against them? When uh, if they if those representatives kind of faction a bit um, and kind of create their own little you know, faction themselves. It, it, I don't know. I just don't know how you reverse that. Yeah, you're saying it simplifies the the caucus or streamlines the caucusing uh, pro, uh, process. Yeah. I, I think this is a debate that should be brought into um, the future discussions around creds. I am similarly wary of the biggest decisions ever being uh, reduced to just a handful of likely uh, unelected or elected, um, for example, you don't want arbitrary when we make protocol upgrades and so on and so forth. I think we need the biggest discussions subject to the biggest approval process. However, there's definitely scope in certain areas to essentially delegate authority to certain people. And if they're not doing their thing, um, they're moved out. But yeah, I think that definitely needs more thought and it definitely needs to be really tailored to that right area and have the right mechanism in place. But I, th I think it's definitely, we can add more representation and move quicker. And for example, there could be, for example, sub grants. I'm, I'm generally wary against committees as well. There's, there's issues with committees and they become very static, very hard to move across, move out. They kind of hold on to their budgets and so on and so forth. Um, and often you actually see the best run organizations, they spin up for a certain project, specific purpose, and then spin down. So, um, yeah, I'm showing my natural biases against uh, too much bureaucracy or process, but there's definitely something here. I think it's definitely uh, worth unpacking as we kind of discuss creds, but I generally think creds will solve a lot and in, in tandem with the existing processes we have, but there's plenty of areas to tweak that and improve that. And so I think keeping this frame in mind of where experts could be helpful, I think is a good frame for us as we go into this next model and even debate this further. Dermot, you were mentioning um, the cred system and the different categories. Has there been any discussion about a category specifically for validators? Um, they are the Supreme Court of this network for now. Well, yeah, well, it's a, it, it is a good point, right? Um, for, yeah, at, le at least for now, until we move to a roll up, validators can choose to run the code or not. Um, generally, they have other interests, and holding up the network often goes against the the game theory when they have the kind of economic skin of the game and the repercussions that would have. But yeah, well, I, I agree. It's even in our DAG constitution, and something with the updated DAG constitution that will reflect um, the new governance upgrade. Those who essentially run the blockchain code and, and ultimately process these uh, transactions and everything else, they are obviously the, the ultimate arbiters. And that's actually where, yeah, so, so I, I agree with that. However, in terms of building a system that is designed to reward impact, currently validators will be recognized in the stake category, which is um, currently, you know, this is all going to be subject to debate and discussion. Having 40% of the power with the uh, Builders having 40% and builders is seen as more broadly and not just technical builders, everyone adding impact. And then 20% to, to citizens who are one person, one vote, people who show that they're aligned and having skin in the game. So validators will have power based on how much stake they have in the protocol. Although there is, there's some mechanisms to ensure that the biggest whales have that kind of um, stake reduced somewhat in comparison to others, kind of like a quadratic function, basically a square root function, basically. Does that answer your question? 
Yes, it does. Thanks. Cool. Other thoughts? Yeah, Breezy, I, I tend to agree. Uh, you know, it's we, we've talked a lot about it, and Dermot's even addressed that, you know, the idea isn't to become a plutocracy. I mean, we've seen in a couple of different other ecosystems and, and Gnosis. I mean, I talked about MakerDAO's uh, subcommittee uh, structure, which I think works well for some things. But in general referendums in, in Gnosis, uh, if you're not a multimillionaire holder of Gnosis governance tokens, you basically have no say. It's a democracy in name only. Um, and, and we saw that when uh, Pocket uh, actually put up a proposal there. A lot of decent people who understood Pocket's impact uh, voted in favor of that proposal. Um, but the uh, whales in the Gnosis ecosystem who don't even know who Pocket is um, just never weighed in and left it without the ability to achieve a quorum necessary to pass the actual proposal. Uh, there, there are some fundamental issues with pure democracy, and that's, you know, that's something that we are attempting to approach in a number of ways. Uh, the cred system is one of those ways. Uh, and a trustee model of representation is another way. And, and those two things can actually, uh, I think, work hand in hand, all things considered. But I started off with a white paper that was probably much more complicated about two and a half years ago or so. It was like October of 22, maybe. So actually about a year and a half ago, I guess. Uh, and before I come back out with, you know, trying to uh wrestle with what that would look like in a current environment i want to make sure that it's updated and streamlined and that a lot of the early ideas uh, that i had are uh cleaned up and and appropriate for where we are currently as a community um but you know yeah it, it's something that we'll certainly talk about with uh creds along the way and you know i think i i think maybe where the um the alpha version of this could potentially be within the cred system where there's another uh, there's another group um, where you have builders and then, uh, you know, citizens, gateways, and then you have this, uh, you know, um, representatives, right? Uh, and they have, you know, it's not this carte blanche, right, uh, uh, power. Um, but it's a a significant boost in in votes, and how you get into that group is if you're voted in right by all the other parties, um, or maybe that should strictly be a citizen vote um, or something of that nature, uh, which I, I think would be a, a huge value add uh, to the cred system, where you could have votes that are just um, you know just citizens. So you don't have any of the waiting because I think there will still be value for that kind of mechanism in the future. But regardless, uh, if you have a house, okay, you have a stake or house. So if you have a house that is of representatives and they are all given a certain level of voting power, um, it kind of achieves what you're kind of go what you're going for, Jinx, in a, uh, um, you know, in a, yeah, in a in a in a certain fashion, and then. Even with that, if we have the ability to make votes that only apply to a certain house, um, then there could be some proposals that are delegated or, you know, some voting that is delegated entirely to that house where uh, only if, yeah, only if you're in this house, you get a vote. So that, that that's how I see you could kind of go with an alpha version of this um, without, you know, throwing everything out because I think there is I think kind of the the structure of the cred system is very unique inside of crypto and but also very methodical I think it's I think it is doing a good job of trying to uh, create a a mechanism that really does give people the ability to you know get the amount of vote that they essentially deserve because of their skills their expertise or involvement in the ecosystem um, I might not always agree with the, the certain balance of it, but I think the mechanism of it is 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 a solid idea to to use as a 
a, a starting point for this this kind of like new DAO. Um, so that that's how I see it could fit in kind of in an alpha version. Beautiful. Other thoughts? Dermot, uh, when is the that introduction? Sorry, what what introduction is this? This is the the DAO constitution, or no? I thought you said that there was uh, going to be a, a public discussion around uh, uh, the creds thing. Uh, oh, um, the public discussion around creds. I think actually Zach's probably closer to that than me. I think on the, on the, on this today's call, actually, I think the the guy who was um, discussing the um, covered calls proposal, he wanted to join, but actually sounds like he just had to drop off um, because he had another call. And he, he saw we're in a, a nice and interesting debate and he didn't want to, to ruin that. So I think he may join another call this week or, or, or next week. But um, I don't know if that's actually a topic we want to, 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 to discuss now between us ourselves. But, um, but um, I think we can also um, make sure we kind of finish off this, this discussion on, on, on creds and I guess governance more broadly too. Beautiful. Okay, I see Derek typing in here still. Uh, I mean, I'll just unmute. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to sort of circle back to, I forget if it was a week or two ago in the ecosystem call, we were talking about the nature of these calls and the the challenge of disseminating information, right? And so I just wanted to say, at least for my two quay, this has been a great way to take something pretty big that has a lot of context that preceded me and to make it possible to get up to speed and hear lots of voices and have a chance to synthesize it. So even though synchronous calls have their downfalls, like a lot of this information will get lost to the ether because people don't tend to watch recordings and we're probably not paying someone enough to do a really good job scribing and record keeping. But I appreciate the role this plays in getting people not necessarily on the same page, but at least knowing for a fact that everyone who's in this room right now is heard the voices of all the people that are contributing. So there's a sense of confidence in the way that the like conversation's evolving. So I appreciate it. Good. I'm glad to hear it. And it's something that we want to, you know, more formally adopt as a, a regular recurring uh, uh, feature in these calls. That being said, although not everyone may listen to the recording, I will remind everybody that pocket scans uh, Phoenix um, search. Uh, we'll also uh, capture, uh, we'll also search transcripts of all calls, including these. Um, so you can, when searching uh, within uh, community history, um, see the positions of people uh, around uh, various uh, topics in these conversations. You got it, Balut? I can't, I can't wait till... Uh, uh... The AI starts actually participating in the calls itself. That'll be that'll be when it get, gets excited. I can't <laughs> let you vote that way, huh? <laughs> that would be great. Uh, yeah, we're we're trying to make the abstracts of each call and make them more searchable in the Nick's site. But with all the update from the new version of the Pocket Network, we are kind of busy working in other stuff but yeah they will come actually all the back end is ready but we need people to work on the front end and they are scarce but yeah hopefully someday the ai will be giving us so based on all these calls and it will not be all lost uh speaking of speaking of protocol i, I uh, wanted to quickly uh put a little blurb in here um, yeah, we have a uh, we have a builders call tomorrow. Um, uh, some of the areas we're going to be touching on is uh, we're going to be talking a little bit more about the architecture on uh, how Pocket uh, how Shannon is being designed, um, which will actually then lead to my second point, which is uh, help identify you know how builders can start thinking about building with Shannon. Um, there's a lot of uh, uh, yeah, there, there's 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 a lot of areas that folks could start thinking about and planning uh, when it comes to Shannon. 
Uh, and most of this all is because Shannon is built off of the uh, pocket or, or the uh, Cosmos SDK. So any most anything that works with the Cosmos SDK, meaning the Cosmos ecosystem, uh, can be can work with or be retrofitted for Pocket. Um, so there's okay. actually a uh, yet yeah, that that in itself is still being there. There will be an I uh, yeah there will there will be an IBC compatible. Uh, system. It might not be directly. It might be uh, a little indirectly uh, through um, through kind of like another service. But uh, yes, there will be elements of IPC. It might not be immediate, but uh, yes, we will be in that ecosystem. Um, nice. But regardless, the uh, being based off of the Cosmos SDK opens up tons of possibilities. So we're going to kind of talk about what some of those possibilities are. Um, and ultimately that'll allow people that are uh, either current builders or wanna build, start thinking about Shannon and what they could actually start doing to either prepare or you know, start building new tools. Um, and we are wanting to have a test net by the end of the month. Um, and just kind of as a protocol update, uh, the uh, right now they're trying to upgrade to the latest Cosmos SDK, which is Cosmos, what, 0.5, uh, 0 0.50. So they're trying to upgrade right now to the latest and greatest Cosmos SDK because it uh, uh, has a, it, it's it has it's a pretty big upgrade in terms of uh, changing things around. So they're in the middle of moving all of that uh, that was originally under uh, 0 0.47 to 0 0.50. Um, and like tomorrow, I'm going to go through the architecture on like what an upgrade kind of looks like inside Pocket with the different services that we have uh, or the different platforms that we're working with. Because if you think of Pocket, I'll, I'll quickly just share this. If you uh, in the text, if you look at um, if you look at Shannon, what Shannon is, is Shannon is basically built on top of the Cosmos SDK and then co the Cosmos SDK makes it uh, is then integrated into Rollkit which Rollkit is then what connects us to Celestia. So it's almost like Rollkit is this middleware between the Cosmos SDK and Celestia. Uh, and so we're gonna get into what that is a little bit um, and what that looks like. But uh, like Rollkit right now, uh, just as kind of a protocol update, uh, they're not on the latest Cosmos SDK. So there are some challenges with us trying to upgrade to the latest SDK and them not being on the latest SDK. So, uh, so, you know, there's some natural challenges there. Uh, and, you know, I'm going to kind of go into it a little bit more and just kind of explain so folks are aware of, uh, you know, what, what is happening on the development side of the protocol. But just wanted to give a plug to um, our meeting tomorrow if you are into the kind of technical side and you're curious about what Shannon is going to look like and then how to build within Shannon. Uh, tomorrow will kind of be a very entry-level uh, way to start getting into that area. Great. I'm well, looking forward to seeing all that. Well, if that's uh, if that's wrapping us up for the week, we are uh, at the top of the hour, so uh, we'll call it here. Uh, as always, you know, I have uh, strong opinions loosely held, and I think that that's uh, generally the right way to approach uh, questions where. Uh, discovery and debate are necessary to find the right outcome. Uh, encourage everyone to uh, take a similar uh, approach to that. Uh, but that being said, if you are interested in the structure and or participating in the build of the protocol, please make sure you're on the builder's call tomorrow and I will see you all then. And also next week, same time, same channel.